That sound of all those announcements there is because today we're going from Almaty to Shimkent by, by train. Welcome to Kazakhstan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Kazakhstan. <laughs> And that noise there is Travel Cat Felix. And uh, we've got quite a story to go with Travel Cat, but uh, we'll save that for later. So, when we arrived at the train station by taxi, uh, waiting out there was a bunch of men with trolleys. And they kindly placed all our luggage on our trolley, brought us here. And uh, we're not sure, um, or I'm not sure because I don't speak the language. But uh, apparently they said, we, our train's not here yet, but when they come back, they're not sure exactly where the train's going to stop, but they will come back and help us load our stuff onto the train. So this is a platform. This is Almaty 2 train station. There's Almaty 1, which is outside of the main part of the city. And Almaty 2, strangely enough, is the central station in the city. Now, we had, um, yeah, we had issues trying to... Uh, buy our tickets online because we were trying to figure out what it was we were actually purchasing and now my wife speaks fluent Russian and um, but unfortunately the website just doesn't cut it really it doesn't show you what you're after what you what you're purchasing we've ended up with second class tickets because we were desperate to get a room to ourselves mainly because of Felix the travel cat and um, so we've ended up with a a second class cabin. As you can see, in order to go from one platform to the other, one has to walk across the railway line. The Almaty 2 train terminal. All marbly. Lots of seating. It's hard to move around because it's, it's quite busy with people. Lots of seating for when you're waiting. Now I'm trying to find a sign that uh, resembles the word toilet. They didn't come prepared with Tenge in hand in case I have to pay, which is commonplace here. Well, I hope this is our train because if it's not and we have to go on another platform, we're going to have to walk through a train to get to our train. Fingers crossed this is our train, but I did hear the word Astana, which is oh, Astana, and uh, that's not here. That's not where we're going. And we're lucky we've got our trolley, gentlemen, because without them, we wouldn't understand where we had to go to catch a train and also we wouldn't be able to get all our bags across all these railway lines. So as we're tearing down the our platform, I'm looking at that uh, train there and thinking well that's an old one, I wonder if that's going to be ours. And then I look over here to the left as we're rushing on down. And we've got um, a more modern train. And I'm sure I saw Shimket and Riddle on it. So I think that's our train. This is our second class room. Now, we're not exactly flushed with, um, with space because we don't, carry, we don't travel lightly. But we've got one bed up top. One bed down here that's now currently occupied by Travel Cat, Cat Felix and beautiful Lenny. And um, and that's really all I can show you here. Oh, there's a little area up here, a little 
past the little shelf there. We've got two bags up there. And that's really all we've got. Now, the reason we got this small second class cabin is because it's the only way we could get a setup that was just for the two of us. Otherwise, we'd be in with four people. And the first class cabins were gone. And the other thing about the first class cabins, I didn't really explain or show you what they were like. In fact, they didn't show us what any of these were like. So we're lucky that um, we've got a cabin that suits us. So I'm only just gonna tell you what our little Felix has been up to since we arrived two weeks ago in Almaty. So uh, on the 27th of April at night, when, when we were having our dinner, uh, Felix was having his dinner on the balcony. And, um, and um, one hour later, we realized he was gone. And it was a rainy and miserable day, so we looked for him everywhere, um, every day. So he was missing for 10 days. Today, when we were um, just about to leave, all the bags already outside, waiting for the taxi, Kevin spotted him on the roof. And um, yeah, it was a bit of a challenge to get him off the roof because uh, he, I'm assuming he became a little bit wild and scared. Kids um, tried to help, but uh, he's got even more scared. So me at my age had to go on top of the roof. Um, so yeah, it's been a long time since I've been doing that. And uh, yeah, about like 20 minutes later, we've got him. And now he's like happiest cat ever. Now, what we didn't mention there was that um, we were actually in a unit that was five stories up. And luckily, when he jumped out the window, like a crazy cat, luckily there was an awning, only two stories down, a tin awning went over the shop areas. And that's what broke his fall. And we searched everywhere for him for two, for 10 days. We did some Facebook groups, contacted all the vets, did everything you possibly could. And um, there was this one little part of the roof that had a piece of tin over it, and that's where he was hiding out. So I didn't think he'd go far, but <laughs> anyway, we got him back, and we think that's a good thing. This is our this is our second class carriage. It's all kind of modern looking up there. It's very narrow though. No one person can walk up the hallway. I'm gonna hop down here looking for oh, here's the toilet. So is that a toilet? This is a washroom. Okay. So that's where you wash your hands. Looks clean enough, functional enough. I think I heard a noise in the toilet. I'll just try the door to see if it's open. Oh, it's close, there's somebody in there. Look at that ladder. Crossing into the next carriage. Oh, sorry. See like a man that was working there. Won't bother him. But we've just started moving. And I'm excited, I reckon it's the best way to travel. You sit back and relax. Just look out the window. And uh, watch our Matty pass us by. And we've got a 10 hour trip. It's going to be overnight. And we'll get back and tell you what it's like to sleep. But I will try and find a toilet to uh, just to check and see what it's like for um, utility. Okay, so the lady that was in there can find a different carriage, so this might be the toilet for everybody. And shall we get the tower in here? And then, all stainless steel, all clean enough. It's got a little, well, got a mirror, that's always a good thing. I like mirrors and a wash thing so i won't film anymore because you probably wouldn't appreciate it as the sun goes down on the kazakhstan plain This is Shimkent at sunrise. So 
So it's good morning from Shin Kent, and uh, we, there is a um, restaurant car. We didn't get to see that because we've had a cat to babysit, I'm afraid, who, uh, if any one of us left the room, would carry on a little bit like he is now. So we weren't able to go to the dining car, which is okay. But we're here, very excited to be in a new place. So here we are, we made it to Shinkent. Not an easy feat. That's our luggage. <laughs> we carry quite a bit of luggage. So we've got another story that we're going to tell. Uh, the reason we just dragged all that luggage here and we've just refused three cab rides even though we need a cab, um, Elena will explain when we finally get to our, our accommodation. Which is a rental unit that doesn't know we've got a cat because we didn't have a cat when we booked it. <laughs> now we do. Okay, so we've been here for three hours. Uh, we've made some new friends. How come it was? I have no idea how we made this new friend. But, um, we probably can't video right now because of our new friends. Well, they are a little bit odd. They will come and just sit down beside you or sit on your lap. If you look over there, that's our cat in that bag. And we're sitting there and the old mate just come and plop yourself down and say a word. Perfectly normal. That's just the way it is. They're very friendly. <laughs> very friendly. Yeah. Well, it's not like there's nowhere else for him to go. <laughs> Okay, we'll try again. We're just um, in Russian, of course. Had a story shared with us about this gentleman's three wives. How they all massage him. And my one wife said, what if they all start whinging at once? And he said, not a, po not a possible, because they all live in separate places. But anyway, we've been here for three hours. The reason being is that our accommodation guest, man, is... Uh, neglected to give us the address and um, of where we are supposed to go to so we can't catch a cab to go there because we don't know where it is and we've con tried to contact him and he wouldn't get out of bed finally he answered and said oh um, yeah, we'll yeah, we'll, 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 I'll be ready for you at about nine o'clock so that's another hour from now so uh -huh. Looks like we've got some more issues. I don't know what's going on. Elaine is having a great time hearing these wonderful stories that people are sharing with us. And we're not sure why they're sharing them with us. And I'm not sure why they're telling me because I, they, they know I don't understand them. Because we've had some time to kill. We're we might try, try to record a little later on, but it's hard being popular in Shin King. Okay, so I should explain to our friend that's come down, almost sat on my lap beside us, who is drawing his friends to us, to, telling us all kinds of stories, um, almost got in a fist fight with a, another man not five minutes ago. However, we've got some time to kill, so we thought it might be time, if we can, to explain what our adventures in Almaty were like. So, we saw that the porter was helping us, and I was very praiseful of how that porter come along and got all our bags on the trolley. You know, and he told us a thousand tingo. Now, when we got to the train, I'll just finish this bit. When we got the train, he extorted another, what, 10,000 tingo out of us? 11,000. Right, so he extorted 11,000 out of us by saying, oh, no, 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 oh, it's a thousand per bag, but I think he was encouraged by him witnessing what happened to us previously. That's all in Russian, of course, so I don't know what's going on. But um, when we turned up to board the train, there were some men in uniform and Elena got to talk to them. What happened, darling? 
So, <clears throat> first of all, he asked if we have any documentation for the cat. Uh, yes, we do. So I showed him um, the paperwork. Uh, he was um, okay with that, but still said, "Oh well, the cats are not allowed." And um, and then he said, "Do you know that uh, one single person is only allowed for a one large uh, suitcase?" I said, uh, "No, actually, I wasn't told th that information when I booked the tickets." He said, um, "Well, yes, that's the thing." I said, uh, "Does it?" Uh, you know, do we have that information written somewhere? Uh, that's on your uh, train ticket. Where? Uh, it's a small fine print. I can't really see anything because that was that small that um, without a uh, large uh, magnification glass you won't be able to see anything. So when we get to our apartment I'll have a look at it closely. So meanwhile he said um, you've got one option to send the remaining of your bags as a transfer to that city. I said, well, how, how about we'll just negotiate and uh, we'll take all our bags with us. He said, how much can you give me? I said, how about 1,000? And he laughed at me. I said, look, uh, we are from another country. We don't know the price in, in Almaty. We don't know the cost of bribes, really, really. <clears throat> um, so he said, 15. I said, like, well, I don't have that much. Uh, how about five? Oh, no, 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 not a thing. So we negotiated down, you know, up to 10,000. And I was just about to take the money out. And he said, no, no, not here. Because we were st still standing outside of the um, carriage. Um, so as soon as we got in, he said, um, he took me into the very cozy, small, spot in the corridor he said right now so I gave him 10,000 and he was happy about it yeah so, so apparently yeah. your bags and your cat um, are not a problem provided you uh, negotiate the correct um, fee show we should speak so yeah so that's a little bit of a thing that you need to expect if you do travel from um, uh, Almaty to Shimken and uh, I mean Elena's from Kyrgyzstan, which is a neighbouring country. She's been telling me this for years, that uh, you've got to expect um, corruption all over the place. But that's the first time it's happened, twice, right in front of my eyes. And um, yeah, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, especially with my background. It's not really, um, it's sort of the sort of thing that I've been fighting against my entire adult life. Um, but anyway, that's, so, that's the culture. So anyway, um, it's very advisable for you um, to carry some extra cash in case if you encounter a situation like that and uh, make sure you um, keep in mind your total cost for the travel if you have uh, a few extra bags so for instance our travel cost us uh, 24,500 tin plus we paid uh, 21,000 tin gear in bribes so that's it's almost, bribes, it's almost yes. double basically yeah. I really don't believe that the bags or the cat had anything to do with anything no. I think it might have been our ethnic look and the fact that we were there ready to put everything on board and we really had no choice yet to go along with it because otherwise we would still be on the platform help us grow like share and subscribe So, we finally made it to our Soviet apartment, not the Soviet apartment that we thought we were going to. The man that we'd uh, booked through weeks in advance, or Elena found and, and spoke to and had messages back and forth about all kinds of things, proved to be that unreliable that in the end, she got on uh, booking.com and found us another Soviet apartment. And uh, we've been very lucky because this one is with the very first guests here, and it's owned by a very young lady, young uh, I think she's Russian, and um, she's gone out of her way to solve any issues or problems that we've found. And when you're in an old Soviet apartment, you will find issues, things like how the hot water works, um, how do you plug in the washing machine, but you've got to ex expect issues when you're paying less than $23 US a day. 
So just bear that in mind. Um, but yeah, very happy with the young lady that's uh, helping us out with this place. And um, we might even put something in the comments uh, if anyone's interested. So I uh, guess I would recommend anyone to come here because this young lady really will knock herself out to make you happy. The only issue is you probably probably will need to speak Russian. Uh, there's, there's no English um, or anything other than Kazakh and Russian that we can find spoken in uh, Shimken. So um, anyway, we're here, we're comfortable, and now we can make some videos on Shimken. Up in the corners here, you'll see playlist and another good video for you to watch. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye cat.